So, got a Kaiser. K -k -k Kaiser. All right, I'm excited for this one. This is a Kaiser Porcupine. About a three and a half inch blade, in house design, 9CR18 MOV, JG10. It's got steel liners. Yeah, come on. I mean, nothing really fancy about it. Steel, jade, 9CR. I I like 9CR. It's good steel. Wasn't too long ago. I mean, when it popped, it was considered to be really good steel. Got a drop bear 10-year anniversary. I believe that was yet last year. It's got additional hardware. It's got black hardware in the knife. So it's got a bag of black hardware. Oh, the texture on this porcupine. Wow. Let's get rid of this packaging. And if I remember right, the blade on this thing is going to wow me too. We'll see. The Kaiser Porcupine. 9CR. All right. Yeah, look at this texture on this G10. Come on. All G10 should have minimum. Should be that. Minimum. Interesting. All right, let's get that blade out. I'm excited. Uh-huh. What's that, like a, a Warncliffe? Flat. Oh, the action. Come on. Wow. We only got one way in, and that's that back flipper. This is one that, when I looked at it, I thought, eh, you know, I'm going to bring it in the channel. I don't know if I'm going to keep it. Just because it looked out there enough. I mean, just a little bit in my hand is kind of making me go, I don't know, this may have to just go in the case over there. Wow. Let's look at the badging here. Get a look at everything. It just says Kaiser. There's no steel badging on here. And then on the back side, it says Porcupine. Right there. Needle sharp point. Mm-mm-mm. And I, I believe it's only got a liner on one side. But wow, is that action something. It's something. It's got jimping that comes all the way up and around. Mm -hmm. Man, let's get in it. Wow, pretty different, different and cool, different in a good way. I didn't sense any Loctite there. I think the pocket clip's got to go first. I can't really get to that screw. I mean, I can get to it. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Get the tension off that blade. Yeah, they greased it up. No worries. Don't have oil all over it, so that's good. Yeah, so we got a metal liner in the one scale, which includes the liner lock. And then in the other scale, there's nothing. These are, uh, they have these little pressed in uh nuts for the screws yeah i mean pretty minimalistic here definitely price point should be a budget line that'd be my guess it's got one steel liner it's going to go in the scale the other one is riding right on the uh the steel uh liner and we'll get this grease off of here wipe it down a little bit and then we'll put a coat of thin oil on everything get back to it 
the, uh, it's interesting, the internal stop pins are black. Kind of an interesting little detail. Seems a little unnecessary. It's inside the knife, really. You can't see it. The, uh, the pivot is captured in the top-down scale there. So it locks everything in. That's good. All right, let's clean up these bearings. And the one washer. Polish side up. Just going to put it right on there. Kaiser Porcupine. I'm pretty sure visually it's just, it's far enough out there that that's what got me interested in this knife. Now, here's a noteworthy moment. On this side, that stop pin is is being stopped by this milling in this G10. Fortunately, on the other side, the liner in there is where the stop pin is is hooking up but on one side it's hitting the g10 at least on at least on the other side um it's making metal contact with the liner because you know snapping the action back and forth opening the knife it wouldn't be long before that g10 would fail and this thing would have uh it would have uh uh lock rock mm-hmm you would think. Or potentially. How about that? What do I know? Might be fine. Might completely wear that out and never cause any issues. That's what I should have said the first time. Alright, here we go. That's right, it's captured. We gotta get that lined up. There we go. Yep, that's it. I didn't even look at the detent because this thing was running like a Swiss watch. Mm hmm. Had wonderful action. Excellent detent. Nice drop shot action. It didn't need me fiddling with it for sure. Yeah, that went in. Let's check these since we're right here. Yeah, it was a little loose. Got one on this side. There we go. Yeah, there's no play. Might be too tight. Let's hold this back. Nah, look at that. Wow. Wow. Wowie, wowie, wow. Stunning. So nice. Yeah, completely dropped shut. It's so much so, I'm going to check for play again. I just can't help it. I have to. Yeah, there's no play in any direction on this. Man, that action. So let's talk about that action. Where are we at? I mean, it's got nice jimping, so it's easy to access. Can't fail it. Even with the lightest touch, that thing runs all the way out and locks. Comes out with authority, and then once it's past the detent, it's just drop shots. No play. It's got excellent, excellent snappy action and the audible of it is, man, it's something else. I 
I mean, that's an A action all day long on a budget knife. It is definitely a budget knife. A action budget knife. Let's talk about ergonomics. So there's not so confident, confident, very confident. This is going to go right up to a confident grip because the, the flipper tab is there. It's angled to the front, but it's got some pretty good jimping on it. That And then the way everything else is lined up here, there's purpose space for each finger. And just the way that it all comes together, I am very, very locked into this knife. Now, I'm not going to go over that confident line because this is subdued a little bit. If that was just slightly taller, I'd be willing to say it's it's definitely a confident grip. I'm saying I'm bumping up to it only because if I met resistance like this box, if I came in, I mean, I'm really locked in. I don't think there's any chance that that grip fails and that I go over and get that blade. But without that finger guard being a little more pronounced, I'm not willing to say that about the knife. Uh, reverse grip, wonderful spot to put the thumb and cap that off in that grip. Not so much in that reverse grip. Yeah. Um, pocket clip. Let's check it. Check it. Yeah, in the deep stuff, one hand in. Tiniest little profile sticking up. And it actually... I don't know, somewhat portrays a smaller knife because of that narrow little pointiness there. Wasn't a lot of tension on that. And not a lot there either. And again, not a super amount there. I mean, it's going to hold just fine. I'm not going to call it a dryer clip, but it's got good tension, so I'm going to leave it be. I um, wonder if I can make blade contact anywhere here. The back is good. The tip is protected. So the tip's good. The clip is good. And there's no potential for incidental blade contact in the pocket. I mean, wonder if that blade's sharp. Wow, this thing, the action, mm-mm-mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's super sharp. Wow. Price and availability. Where's it at, and what do I got to pay for it? Beautiful stonewashed satin finished blade. Very nice. All right. Price and availability. Okay. I found it one place. I found one seller on eBay selling this knife. The retailers that I deal with, they're all show, sold out. And so it looks like there's one seller that has like one of these knives left. So by the time you see this, there might not be any on eBay but they were asking $42 plus shipping and some stuff there. So I, you know, I don't know. By the time you're done with tax and everything, you're probably out around 50 bucks. This would be my, oh, pardon me, would be my guess on this thing. And it is completely a budget knife, but I have to tell you, I really like it. For a budget knife, it's, it's pretty solid. Pretty, pretty cool. The Kaiser Porcupine, man. I dig it. I mean, if you can find one, check it out.